Did you know that researchers have already learned how to breed half pigs, half monkeys? And what about an unusual hybrid fish, bred completely by accident? Or experiments on human-animal crossbreeding? It's definitely worth finding out more about that. In this episode, I'll show you the new hybrid animals that scientists have created. Let's go! A Hybrid of a Pig and a Monkey In 2019, hybrids of monkeys and pigs were born in China. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? For the first time, Chinese scientists managed to go all the way with implanting monkey stem cells into pig embryos to give birth to new animals, so-called chimeras. The goal of this experiment was to grow human organs in pigs for transplantation. Geneticists transplanted crab-eating macaques embryonic stem cells to pig embryos. 4,000 pig embryos were injected with artificially grown monkey cells five days after fertilization. A total of 10 piglets were born, of which only two were chimeras. Numerous tissues in the chimera piglets, including heart, liver, spleen, lungs, and skin were partially composed of monkey cells, but their proportion was low, between 1 to 1,000 and 1 in 10,000. However, all the newborns did not live more than a week. Hybrid Fish In 2020, Hungarian scientists did something they didn't expect. In the course of their work, which was aimed at saving an endangered fish species, they managed to create an unusual hybrid of the Russian sturgeon and the American paddlefish, and to think that evolution separated these fish 184 million years ago. From the very beginning, the scientists had the following task – to breed the Russian sturgeon in captivity using a process called gynogenesis a type of asexual reproduction when the offspring developed exclusively from the mother's DNA. The American paddlefish biomaterial was used for fertilization, but something happened that no one would have thought possible. Offspring were born. Some of the individuals were an equal mix of genes from both parents, and some were much more similar to the Russian sturgeon. Russian sturgeons are economically important. They're an important source of most of the world's caviar. The Russian sturgeon reaches a length of 2 meters and weighs 12 to 24 kilograms, occasionally reaching 80 kilograms or more. This fish feeds on mollusks and crustaceans. The American paddlefish filters zooplankton in the waters of the Mississippi River watershed, where water from the Mississippi River and its tributaries flows. It's also quite a large fish, with an average adult size of up to 2 meters in length and a weight of 70 to 80 kilograms. As a result of random interbreeding, about a hundred individuals survived out of several hundred. They had not yet come up with a name for them at the time, but roughly it sounds like the sturtlefish. Mullard The mullard is an interspecies hybrid resulting from crossing domestic muscovoy he duck and several other duck breeds, such as the Orpington chicken, the American Pekin chicken, or the Rouen duck. The result was a new breed of domestic duck. It was artificially bred by man in order to improve some of the qualities of the currently known breeds. The result is a bird that meets all the needs of modern poultry. Mullards are very attractive. They have a white color which is complemented by one striking distinguishing feature – a black spot on the head. It looks like a hat. Now there are already birds with a variety of colors of plumage. It depends on what breed domestic muscovoy he ducks were crossed with. What else can a person who wants to create a new animal do? How powerful a bee can be bred? And what exactly does a cat with the habits of a dog look like? Stay tuned to find it out and see other amazing hybrid animals that will impress you. Cama A cama is an interspecies hybrid of a female llama and a male one-humped camel. A cama was first created in 1998 by scientists at the Dubai Camel Breeding Center. They had to resort to artificial insemination, otherwise nothing would have come out because a llama is six times smaller and lighter than a camel. But it was not only the size that separated them. Llamas and one-humped camels do not naturally occur in the same area. Though both animals belong to the Camelidae family, their habits are very different. Camels live in Asia and Africa, and llamas are found only in South America. The goal of scientists was to breed an animal that would have the same valuable wool as that of a llama and the same high endurance as that of a camel. A camma has short ears and a long tail. This hybrid also has twin hooves and pretty long and strong legs, which is important for long journeys in the desert. A camma has no hump, 
and its fur, which reaches 6 centimeters in length, is fluffy and soft. The weight of these animals reaches 50 to 70 kilograms, Kamla feeds on thorny bushes and is able to drink a lot of water at once and then do without it for a long time. Africanized Bee The Africanized Bee, or the Killer Bee, I like that name, it's a hybrid of the East African lowland honeybee with various European bee species. The hybrid was bred by the geneticist and entomologist Warwick Kerr in Brazil more than 65 years ago. He was tasked with creating an insect that would be better adapted to a hot climate, and he did very well. The hybrid turned out to be more hardy and, more importantly, mellifrous. But on top of everything else, the hybrid turned out to be incredibly aggressive. During one of the experiments, by a fatal accident, 26 queens of the Africanized bee were at large. They did not hesitate and soon took control of the local bee breeds and species. Further, these insects spread throughout South America and since 1990 have been recorded in the southern USA. A case is known when a swarm of Africanized bees attacked one of the suburbs of Rio de Janeiro. This case is notable for the fact that emergency services tried to use flamethrowers against the insects, but it didn't help at all. Not without reason, they're called killer bees. According to statistics, since 1969, more than 200 people in Brazil have died from the stings of Africanized bees, and several thousand have been seriously injured. Thousands of animals have also been injured. One must remember that they can attack those who are within 5 meters of the hive. Moreover, these bees do not mind chasing their victims for half a kilometer or sometimes more. Dezo. A dezo is a hybrid between the yak and domestic cattle. It's used in agriculture. A dezo can be found in Mongolia as well as in Tibet and Nepal. In appearance, this hybrid resembles a cow with a horse's tail. However, cows are inferior to these hybrids in stamina and productivity. In one year, a female dezo can produce 5,400 liters of milk, almost 1,000 liters more than a full-grown cow. Meat from an adult dezo is 150 to 200 kilograms more than from cows. Dezos live longer than common cows, on average. They can live up to 36 years. Dezos are born naturally very rarely, so since 1990 their breeding has been the domain of scientists. Since then, several breeds have been bred. Male dezos have a very fierce temperament. They're castrated and people get very strong animals, which are used for transportation of heavy things. Savannah The savannah is a hybrid of the wild African cat, a serval, and a domestic cat. The savannah is a special cat with a unique set of traits acquired through its hybridization. The first kitten that resulted from the crossing was named Savannah, which subsequently became the name of the entire breed of new hybrid cats. This unusual hybrid became popular in the late 90s, and in 2001, the International Cat Association recognized the savannah as a new breed. The savannah has a very recognizable appearance. It looks like a miniature leopard, but it's quite a large animal for being a domestic cat. Its height reaches 60 centimeters, and its weight varies from 5 to 15 kilograms. The exotic appearance of the savannah cat is due to its hereditary traits of the serval. These include a thick spotted coat and tall, wide, erect ears with rounded tips, as well as an elongated body, graceful neck, and long paws. As for character, these mini leopards are often compared to dogs for their loyalty. They can follow their owners everywhere, as dogs love to do. They have no problem going for a walk on a leash, bringing a bone, and giving their paw gladly. Moreover, these cats, which are kind of like dogs, are very friendly, playful, and curious. Would you like such a cat? Zebroid Hybrid zebras have been known since at least the 19th century. Mentions of such animals can be found in the works of Charles Darwin. In most cases, a zebroid borns from a male zebra and some female from the horse family. Each result of crossbreeding receives a separate group name. Thus, the process of crossing a horse and a zebra resulted in a zebros. The experience of crossing a donkey with a zebra resulted in a zonkey. During the experimentation on a zebra and a pony, a zoni was born. The results are very cute zebroids. The offspring most often resemble the mother, but they tend to borrow stripes from the father. They're usually on the legs or partially on the neck and torso. The hybrids do not forget the freedom-loving temperament and proud and independent character peculiar to zebras. 
These hybrids are not found in the wild. They're bred for practical use, as riding and pack animals. They're widespread in Africa, as they have advantages over horses and donkeys. The fact is that zebroids are resistant to the tsetse fly bite and better trained than zebras. A hybrid of an animal and a human? And what do you think of the animal-human hybrid? It seems like just a plot from some sci-fi story or movie, right? It turns out that there are real experiments with such distant hybridization. For example, American, Spanish, and Chinese biologists created chimeric human and macaque hybrid embryos that survived outside the body for almost 20 days. For the experiment, the technology was created to keep chimeric macaque embryos alive outside the animal's body for a long time. After six days, scientists injected 25 human stem cells into each of the monkey embryos. One day later, human cells were found in 132 embryos. Ten days later, 103 chimeric embryos were still being developed. But their survival rate soon came to naught because only three chimeras remained alive on day 19. But what's important for the scientists is that the percentage of human cells in the embryos remained high throughout their development. They stress that the results will allow them to improve cellular communication and increase the efficiency of chimerism in host species in the future. That's all, guys. Which hybrid impressed you the most? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you later.